Know ye not that ye are gods. Better get some popcorn ready. This one's going to be pretty long. What we're going to be talking about today is something that will be very important in the next few lessons. The topic is male and female energy. From there, we'll be talking about left brain and right brain, then the new children, and bring it full circle. Ready? Deep breath. A few weeks ago, we touched upon chakras and how they're at the source of what's affecting your internal systems. What we didn't talk about was the energy flowing within them. Now, there's lots of kinds of energy through and around all of us, and that'll be a future topic later on. Today, I want to talk about two specific energies that can be expressed through this image. The energy that flows here is male and female energy. Male energy is focused, and female energy is creative and random. Neither of them is greater nor weaker than the other, and both can be extremely powerful when fully manifested. Female energy is the land of unbridled possibilities, creative potential, and affecting the universe from within. Focused male energy takes direct roads from point A to point B. This energy can be as strong as a tank, accomplishing tasks and going where it needs to go with precision and without distraction. The important thing to know about this energy is in how they move. I'm going to use some super basic sacred geometry to demonstrate this. This is the Fibonacci spiral. We're going to be talking a lot more about it when we dive into the topic. For now, all you have to know is that it starts at one and flows outward forever in a very specific way and is present in all life everywhere. As male energy flows through the spiral, it goes from base point to point, from here to here, to here to here. It doesn't curve, it just goes straight where it needs to be. Female energy, however, would flow in the actual spiral. It would go around, going in and around outside all of the lines, but still getting to the same or similar results. This is the graphic representation of how it flows, but it also acts in the same way. From this understanding, you can see how we use these energies in our lives. It's the difference between driving straight to work and being on schedule all the time, and taking the scenic route because it's a more pleasant ride, even if it means being late. It's baking a cake strictly by what it says in the cookbook and putting it together with what just feels right. It's getting that promotion for working the hardest and getting that promotion for coming up with the best ideas. Here's a relatable example. It's the difference between Inception and Sucker Punch, both about dreams, but one of them being the masculine story of professional men just doing their no-nonsense work, trying to get the job done, and the other being the feminine story that was creative and random and, according to many, didn't make much sense. Both male and female energy, like the chakras, have their own traits. Male energy is linear, analytical, strategic, and practical. However, when male energy is constricted, it is very blundering and confrontational, and what tends to occur is not seeing all sides of a situation, or not being open to any other possibility other than the one being pursued. You can see a lot of that in today's society. Most commonly, we call it being closed-minded. Female energy, on the other hand, moves in curves. It does not stay inside the lines. It is creativity and movement and expression and emotion. It can do anything and go anywhere, but it has trouble sticking to schedule. If constricted, it can get out of its flow, running rampant between emotions and mood swings and ideas. The creativity could get jumbled and come out as an out of control mess. We don't have this widespread issue in today's society, and it has a lot to do with our brain hemispheres. We're gonna look at that in a moment. One big difference between the two is that male energy looks at parts and female energy looks at holes. Before I go on, I wanna make this clear. Male and female energy has very little to do with sexual orientation. Like, it's in the mix, but it's not a fundamental part of the energy itself. For example, if you look at the shape of male and female bodies, men have straighter bodies, women have curvier bodies. We'll probably come back to this in the lesson down the road. Okay, brain hemispheres. We have two of them, and if you remember what you learned in grade 10 biology, this will be familiar. The left brain is the male energy side of the brain. It is orderly, statistical, logical, and mathematical. It sees things in straight lines, rational, and practical. The right brain is the female energy side of the brain. It is our creative side, a free spirit. It is passion and experience of taste and feeling, movement and art. As is the same with the energy, the left brain cannot make sense out of the right brain. You cannot put feelings and expressions within boxes. They must be felt to be truly experienced. The right brain too cannot make sense about how the left brain understands things. Okay, so as a species, we are primarily left-brained. Well, incredibly left-brained. This basically means that as a species, we essentially have a male energy imbalance. There is way too much of it. It is dominant and is constricting on the female side of the brain. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't a bad thing. In fact, it's kind of a blessing in disguise, but we have to talk about some other things first. So, there's nothing wrong with our female energy. We're just not really using it to potential. Our male energy is really messed up, and that's why we're where we are right now. By where we are, I mean the economical, political, financial, religious, nuclear, dolphin and bee-killing global war crisis. After lesson one, I touched upon how right now the world is a mess in a myriad of areas. A few people commented saying, well, study the financial crisis and study the nuclear crisis and study the political crisis. They're all completely separate issues. And this is how the male energy looks at parts. We're realizing now that it's constricting on our point of view. 
as a whole, all of these issues together are further proof that we don't understand how to be harmonious because our male energy is out of sync with each other and the planet. So let's look at indigo children and super psychics. There's a new type of children being born on Earth. Since sometime in the 80s, new children started appearing with different or unusual traits. Their numbers began to increase, and today, nearly 100% of all children born in North America are indigo children. So what are these traits? Let's go over a list developed by Jan Yordi, a play therapist who has been studying and working with indigo children for about four years now. As we go over the list, see if any of these sound like you. Maybe strong-willed, independent thinkers who prefer to do their own thing rather than comply with authority figures or parents. Have a wisdom and level of awareness and caring beyond their youthful experience. Traditional parenting and discipline strategies don't appear effective with these children. If you try and force an issue, a power struggle is the typical outcome. Energetically, indigos are vibrating at a much higher frequency, so they can get scrambled by negative energy easier. Emotionally, they can be very reactive and may have problems with anxieties, depression, or temper ages if not energetically balanced. Are creative right brain thinkers, but may struggle to learn in a traditional left brain school system. Often, indigos are diagnosed as having ADD and ADHD, since they appear impulsive. This is because their brain can process information faster, and they require movement to help keep them focused. Indigos are very intuitive, often psychic, and may hear, see, or know things that seem unexplainable. Indigos may have more problems with food or environmental sensitivities since their system is more finely tuned. When their needs are not met, these children appear self-centered and demanding, although this is not their true nature. These children have incredible gifts and potential, and may be shut down when not properly nurtured and accepted. So what's causing this? Well, for one, there are two new DNA blocks being activated within these kids. They are microcephalin and ASPM. Both of these blocks are designed to regulate brain growth, giving the kids a broader spectrum of thinking and a newer way of learning. Because of this, the average IQ of an indigo child is about 140, which is 40 to 50 points higher than the average IQ. We're just learning now that our school system's methods of teaching are becoming outdated. It's because our kids are changing. We're going to look at the broader spectrum of why this is happening in a moment. For now, let's move on to the badassery that is the super psychics. These kids are hardcore. They can do anything, literally. Some can move solid objects through walls with their minds. Some are blind, yet they can see everything around them from a myriad of different screens within their head. There are some who can look at a person and know absolutely everything about a person just from looking at them, including when they'll die. So why haven't we heard about this? You'd think this would be huge in the world. Well, for one, almost all super psychic children are in China, and almost all of the evidence is hardly ever rendered into English although some of it does make it into the public in China. If you want to learn more about this, the book China's Super Psychics by Paul Dong and Thomas Raphael is a great starting place. Before we wrap up, we totally have to bring this video full circle. What on earth do the new children have to do with male and female energy? Isn't it obvious? Indigo children are directly connected to our species male energy and super psychics to our female. As we grow closer and closer to the peak of the shift, the planet itself is beginning to change. Essentially, this is happening to balance us out. On one half of the world, indigo children are being born. On the other half, super psychics. They are here to help the consciousness of the planet in an incredibly crucial time. There are way more indigo children on the planet than super psychics because it's our male energy that needs to understand. It's through the indigo children and their new way of thinking which is affecting the consciousness of the planet, putting us back onto the harmonious path. As we just learned, to understand things, it takes two to tango. You cannot only understand something by reading about it. You need both sides of the brain to click. In the modern world, things like astral projection and channeling aren't really considered science. One of them is exploring different realms outside of the body, and one is communicating with beings of higher consciousness. And yet, because we can only seem to measure it from experience, it doesn't qualify to be legitimate. Because of this left brain constriction, we have lost a major part of what life is about. See, what we have is called polarity consciousness. We see everything in two ways, good or bad, hot and cold, right and wrong, religion and science. To once again become harmonious with each other and the planet, we have to learn to understand again from the left brain. When this happens, we can move out of polarity consciousness into unity consciousness. And that's essentially where we're going. That about wraps it up. See you next time.